Hello everyone, welcome back to the Canadian Young Physicist Tournament YouTube channel. From this video, we'll be starting to make another season of demonstration videos for the IOPT 2020 problems. Today, we're looking into problem number 15, Pepper Pot. Before we dive into the problems, I would like to make a few announcements about CAYPT 2020 and our channel. First of all, our website has been updated. We included a brand new student resources section. In that section, we put in videos for some of our past IYPT finals, some videos of our team during IYPT 2019, and most importantly, references for IYPT 2020. We are running the resources page using the philosophy of crowdsourcing. You can not only view all of the references that we found, but also submit your own references to be included in the kit. We will thank all of our contributors at the top of our page, and the link to the IOPD 2020 references page is down in the description. Next, I would like to announce that we are launching our channel on the video streaming site Bilibili, so for anyone that's in mainland China, you can check that out. We have also filmed the IOPD 2019 finals, and we are releasing those videos in the near future. Special thanks to Felix Engelman, who ran the official live stream, for sharing the microphone audio with us. So now let's get on to the pepper pot. The problem statement tells us that if you take a salt or pepper pot and just shake it, the content will pour out relatively slowly. However, if an object is rubbed along the bottom of the pot, then the rate of pouring can increase dramatically. Prom wants us to explain this phenomenon and also to investigate how the rate depends on the relevant parameters. For this problem, I got the following material. A large spice dispenser that has three orifice settings, and also a pair of smaller salt or pepper shakers with different openings. Notice that both types of dispenser have grooves on the bottom. I believe this condition is critical for this phenomenon. I also got myself some salt some coffee beans, and also a coffee bean grinder, just for fun. And this reminds me of color of powder, anyone? We can actually divide the situation up into bits to help us understand what's going on. We can have a large opening versus a smaller opening relative to the particle size, and we can also look into the effect of rubbing the pot versus not doing so. As you can see, normally when we shake the pepper pot, only a small amount of granular material actually comes out of the pot. However, we see that as soon as we start to rub the pepper pot, the flow rate increases substantially as the problem statement states. Another observation is that if the opening size is just right, when we stop shaking, the content stops pouring out completely. But when we start rubbing, the flow is continuous, even when the movement of the pot is relatively small. When we switch to a pot with larger openings, the situation changes. In this case, we can't really stop the flow even when we hold the pot steady, or so we think. As time goes on, we see that something really interesting begins to happen. The number of opening that allows the salt to flow through gets less and less. This is actually typical for granular materials, and orifice could just jam up by pure chance. The arrangement of particles near the orifice could just reach a static equilibrium. But once an opening is jammed, it couldn't be unjammed, at least without disturbing the particles near the opening. By holding the pot steady, we essentially allow all of the openings to jam up one by one without actually unjamming any. So after some time, the flow rate will reduce to zero, even if the opening diameter is quite a lot larger than the particle size. At this point, the rubbing introduces vibrations and disturbances to the particles, and thus prevents jamming from ever occurring. Once we know this mechanism, we can use other methods to prevent jamming. We can just tap the pepper pot, or simply just shake it quickly. I would even hypothesize that without the grooves on the pepper pot, this effect would be much less pronounced. You can try this one for yourself. This is my theory about how this phenomenon works. If you disagree with me, feel free to call me out in the comment section down below. Now let me show you what happened with the coffee that I prepared. As you can see, with the fine coffee ground, it is very difficult to get any particles out of the opening. 
This is true for small, medium, and large openings, and this is also true for rubbing and not rubbing. With the coarse coffee ground, it is the same case. The small and medium are simply too small for some of the larger particles to pass through, but for the large opening, the flow rate is still almost zero. To be honest, I did not anticipate this result, especially the result with the coarse ground. In retrospect, I came up with reasons to explain what I saw. With the fine coffee ground, although the orifice size is definitely large enough, but it violated one of my assumptions about granular media, it has greater than expected cohesive properties. As I try to compact the fine coffee ground and then releasing it, it is fairly clear that the angle of repose of this coffee ground can be made to be 90 degrees. This shows that it tends to clump up. We will then need a much larger orifice to have any hope of letting it flow. With the coarse coffee ground, it seems like the particle sizes are too close to the diameter of the opening, and its shape makes it jam much more readily. This makes it so that no amount of shaking or rubbing can actually unjam it. These two cases not only show us some of the limiting cases where the phenomenon will not occur, but also reminds us that sometimes a null result could teach us more than an expected result. Hope you liked today's video. Be sure to check out our future videos on the IYPT 2020 problems. Like and subscribe as always. And make sure to share it with your friends. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.